Hello, my name is Will Strauss, and I'm a Principal Analytics Consultant and Sigma Expert with PH Data. We here at PH Data love our partners Sigma Computing and Snowflake, so in preparation for Snowflake Summit, we want to share some of our favorite pro tips and tricks. Because of the first video in our new series, I thought it'd be appropriate to talk about why understanding the hierarchy of parent and child elements is so important when starting a new workbook. In this example, the table below is a joint table from the daily stock prices and industry tables found in the Sigma Snowflake sample data sets. I use a join table here to help differentiate between data sources and parent tables. So no worries if you don't know much about data blending or joins yet. In this join table, it's gonna act as our parent table going forward. Let's make some formatting changes. We're gonna change the date to a standard format, the volume, to a regular number format. And as you can see from these sources here, the date and the volume did not change. The relationship does not go backwards with the, data, with the uh, original data sources. Here, if I make a child element by clicking on this icon here and selecting table, I now have a child table. If I go ahead and filter the date on my parent table, and we're just going to make it, let's say, between, uh, let's look at 2008. That's an interesting date for stock prices. January 1st. And we won't be exact about this. We're just going to pick 2009, January 1st. And as you see, as I'm updating the filter over here on the parent table, the child table is affected. Also, those formatting changes that we made did persist through. If I filter over on the industry here to say filter to, I don't know, banks, that change does not affect the parent table. This is the direction of the parent child hierarchy. Let's undo that uh, filter real quick. And you know, we're going to make a child of the child table. I like to call these grandchild tables. So here again, clicking here to make a child element, we'll select table. I'm just going to tuck it under this label I already made. Okay, so if I go over here and filter again to banks, you can see down here that the uh, grandchild table was affected, the parent table was not. So we have banks selected over here. If I go all the way back here to my parent table and I filter on that industry group again and select a different one, let's say, healthcare products, boom. You can see because there's a conflicting filter with the child elements and the parent table, no data is found. So this also means that in a continuous flow of your ad hoc analysis, where you can pass filters, custom calculations, or control elements from the parent to their respective child elements, it also means that you can reduce the amount of data passed down to the parent uh, from the parent to the child tables by applying filters all the way back on the parent table. And this, of course, is going to increase your overall performance. From all of us here at PH Data, thank you very much for watching. Remember to look for more quick tips leading up to Summit. Also, please check out our library of blogs, videos, and sample workbooks at phdata.io backslash sigma-computing backslash. And thank you again.